Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe and staying healthy out there. And for those of you that are new here, I'm Jim. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I take my photos from wherever they were when I took them to wherever it is I want them to be when I'm done editing. Uh, today I'm using a couple of different products by Skylum Software. I'm using Luminar 4 and Aurora HDR. They're a wonderful combo. Aurora is still probably my favorite plugin that I use in combination with Luminar 4. They just work together so well. I used to do a lot of HDRs where I'd take multiple brackets, combine them, and build a true HDR. These days I'm not doing that so much, but there are certain scenes that kind of call for that look. And what I'm doing in this video is taking a single exposure, running it from Luminar 4 over to Aurora and back. I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way in terms of what I do, but here's my base photo. Uh, there we go. It's unedited there, and there it is with a couple of minor adjustments on the base layer. Went into the light tool, adjusted temperature and tint, a little bit of contrast, highlights and shadows, pretty basic stuff. And then I went into AI Enhance and gave it some AI Accent. Again, pretty basic stuff. But what I want to do is go punch up some of the details in Aurora HDR and then come back over here to Luminar and show you some of the things I'll do to really bring that photo to life. And just as a teaser, that's my final photo with a number of enhancements that I'm going to do in both of these products. So let's go ahead and get started. I've adjusted my base photo. It is a raw file, um, and I can't remember if I said this was shot in King's Cross Station in London. Favorite town, lovely train station, big old cavernous places like this are just beautiful. Um, so normally what I do before I go to Aurora HDR is a couple of minor things like what I just did over here, and then I'm going to say Edit, Plugins, and Aurora HDR, and pop over there and have a little fun. Okay, here we are in Aurora HDR 2019. Again, love the product. That's what the photo looked like. There it is. It does apply a little bit of tone mapping. I'm going to go into the HDR Enhance uh, filter set and get some HDR clarity and smart structure, which give it a little bit of grit, a little bit of crunch. And I also, uh, because of the way this is shot, which is straight down there with this train, um, there's a lot of depth in the photo. And I think adding that clarity and that smart structure really crunch it up a little bit, which I think enhances the depth. I think from my eye personally, I just kind of want to look all the way down there and kind of see what's going on. Um, so not a massive difference, but that's before and that's after. You can see it's bringing up a little bit of the texture there, which is going to reflect some of the light and color work that I do later. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let me show you. There's before and after Aurora HDR. It definitely has a little bit of an HDR punch to it, but I'm happy with that. So I'm going to say apply. It's going to go drop it back into Luminar 4 as an Aurora HDR layer. Okay, friends, here we are. I am back in Luminar, and there's my Aurora HDR layer. If I turn that off, that's before I went to Aurora HDR, and that's after. Now, it is a little bit HDR-like, and what I did in a recent video showing Aurora HDR, I'll put the video there, is I went in and I painted the Aurora HDR effects just into the cars in that other video because I only wanted to apply it selectively. I'm not going to do that here today, but I'm going to do something a little bit different, and that is I am going to go get a mask, but I'm going to use a luminosity mask, and so the Aurora HDR layer is going to be applied based on the luminosity mask, so it's going to be a little bit different effect. And there we go. It's a bit more subtle implementation, but I'm actually not done. I'm actually going to go invert that mask. So I'm going to say mask and invert. And there we go. So it's a bit more gentle implementation of that Aurora HDR effect. And as much as I like HDR, and I still do like it, even though I don't do it a lot, um, sometimes it gets a little over the top and I have a tendency to push sliders. I know. Um, and uh, so I was trying to pull back, and I was like, how can I pull that back? Well, one way to pull it back is to pull down the opacity of the layer, but another way to do it a little bit more gently is to do a luminosity mask, and then I inverted it. And if you're not familiar with luminosity masks, I got several videos about them here, but basically it applies those edits based on light values. So the brighter parts of the photo get more of the luminosity mask. Let me show you. Um, and then the invert of that is true. So in this case, I inverted it. So more of the HDR effect went into where these areas are red. Those are the darker parts of the photo. Again, because I inverted the luminosity mask, the brighter parts of the photo, which is pretty much the ceiling lights and that sort of thing, got a lower value or a lesser implementation of that HDR effect. So it's a way to still apply some HDR to your photo without really overdoing it. And then if you wanted to, you could come in here and also pull this down a little bit, which I actually think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull that down to about 85. So Aurora HDR layer, luminosity mask, inverted opacity reduction, much more gentle implementation of that HDR effect. There's before and there's after. It's noticeable, 
but it's not extreme. Now I'm ready to do some more fun here in Luminar. So I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer and go uh, add a more a, a number more uh, filters and tools to uh, to really get this to where I want it to be. Okay, and one thing I recommend on layers is coming in here and renaming them. You can just click that and say rename. I'm not gonna do it because this is my last layer, but you'll notice the Aurora HDR layer actually gets named that when you go uh, to the plugin and back. I'm not gonna change this one, but if you have a lot of layers, I recommend naming them to help you sort of keep it straight. Now, I've gotta to refer to my notes a little bit. I'm gonna go about a nine on warmth, so not a lot, just a little bit there. And smart contrast is gonna be about a 17 or 18. And I'm gonna take the highlights down about a negative 50 to 53, something about like that. So all I'm really doing is balancing out the light and a little bit of color. I'm gonna come in here with AI accent and give that about a 37 or so, something about like that. And then AI structure is gonna get something in the low 20s, like 22, 23. I am amping up a little bit of that HDR look by doing the AI enhance, which is brightening and adding some contrast. Uh, and the AI structure, which is also adding a little bit of crunch. Uh, and speaking of crunch, I'm actually gonna go a little bit more uh, by adding in small and medium details, just a light effect of that, but it is a train station. I'm okay with a little bit crunchier look because these are not, you know, this is not a modern art museum where it's pristine and shiny. It's kind of gritty and bringing up that feeling to me is kind of part of what the photo asks for. You can do whatever you want. It's just a personal opinion and a personal preference. I'm gonna get golden hour and give it a little bit more of that golden touch, which I think brings out the yellow at the end of the train. It brings out that yellow stripe there uh, on the boarding platform. And of course, the walls uh, that are brick are kind of yellow as well. Okay, now I'm gonna pop over to the creative tab. I'm gonna get dramatic and I'm gonna go to only to about 14 or 15 here. Again, a little bit of crunch. So I'm just kind of playing up that crunchy look because again, it's a gritty train station. I've said that enough times. Um, mystical I am gonna get. Um, this does a little bit of the opposite effect. It creates a little bit of shadow and mood and I like that in my photos and I think it softens up a little bit of that dramatic look. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is get a LUT. And in this case, I'm gonna get the LUT called Los Angeles. As you hover over the LUT, you'll see that it sort of changes some of the, uh, or it gives you a preview on the photo. So I'm gonna click Los Angeles. Um, and once again here, I'm gonna do a luminosity mask and again, applies it to the brighter parts of the photo, but also, once again, I'm gonna do an inversion of it. The reason that I'm doing the inversion is because the look of the, this, the color look in this LUT, I like in the darker parts, not in the brighter parts. So I'm gonna create the luminosity mask, but that's a quick and easy way to really apply it to specific tones in the image. In this case, the brighter tones, I'm gonna kind of leave alone, and the darker tones, I'm gonna get more of that LUT. Okay, so there's my luminosity mask, there's before, and after, you see, you can't really tell. So what I'm gonna do is click on mask, brush, and I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna say invert, and there you go. So now I think you can see a little bit better. Let me turn this off. There's before and after. It's not massive, but there's a little bit more of that kind of steel gray, kind of bluish color in the darker areas, specifically those two parts of the roof, and um, kind of maybe a little bit of the tracks and this this, uh, this pathway or walkway here on the right-hand side. Now I'm gonna go to Orton and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna give that about a 40, which is pretty heavy. But again, it creates a little bit of shadow and mood and I just like that look. Again, I tend to like a little bit more dramatic edits. If you've been here before, you know that, but it adds a nice bit of shadow and contrast. So if I turn that off, there's the before and the after that also softens up, again, kind of like Mystical does, it softens up the appearance of that crunchiness that I got both from the Aurora HDR layer, but also from using structure and things like that uh, and details here on this layer. Okay, now I'm gonna pop over to the Pro tab, get the adjustable gradient. In the top, I'm gonna give a boost to contrast of about 20. And I gotta check my notes here. I'm gonna take the warmth down a little bit, and I'm also gonna pull the highlights down. There's a lot of highlights in that roof uh, and those windows uh, coming through the roof. So I'm gonna pull those down a little bit. Uh, let me show you what that has done. Again, I'm operating on the top half of the photo only. You can set orientation but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is uh, because I'm gonna do something a little bit different in the bottom and I'm kinda cool with how it divides it right in the middle. All I'm gonna do here is just give this a contrast of about 25. Um, it's gonna get not just contrast in the bottom but also it gives a little bit more darkness to that area on the right hand side, which I kinda like. So there it is before adjustable gradient and there's after. 
a little bit more contrast, a little bit more mood. Again, I like that, um, and I like where we are so far. Now, one thing I don't really like is these walls that were kind of yellowy gold have taken on a little bit of a green look. So I'm gonna go into Color Enhancer, and specifically in Midtones here down in the Color Balance. And what I'm gonna do is get into this magenta and green, and I gotta check my notes. I'm going about a negative 24. And that's creating a little bit more of that magenta color across all of the midtones in the photo. However, of course, I don't want it on all the midtones, so I've got to go edit mask and say brush and make sure you're on paint. I'm going to increase the size of my brush and I'm just going to come over here and paint this kind of color shift that I did for the midtones into these walls. So it is picking that up there and it's not going to be. Um, you know, you're not really gonna see that kind of greenish look. I didn't really care for that uh, magenta color to be anywhere else in the photo, but I definitely liked it on these walls. So there you go. So I basically changed the colors a little bit, not significantly, but I've changed the colors of the wall, got them away from the kind of greenish look, and uh, made them a little bit more of that orange by getting the green in the midtones uh, and taking it toward the magenta here. So if I turn this off, if you look at those two walls, there we go before, really kind of greenish yellow, not attractive in my opinion. And after definitely look more orangey kind of yellow, more in line with kind of how I anticipate they should look. Now, after I did that, I realized there's something else I wanted to do. So I went back to the first tab and go to color, go to advanced settings, and I go to green. And what I've realized is there's a lot of green here that's kind of showing up on the side of this train car. So all I'm gonna do is take the hue kind of to the left and it makes it a little bit more yellow. It's not a massive difference, but if I turn this off, if you look at the before and the after, not a massive difference. You may not even be able to tell in the video. It's just a little something I can see um, and I think it looks a little bit better. And now the last thing I wanna do is go get a vignette. I'm not really adding a vignette, I'm just turning it on slightly. So I'm going negative one on amount. Size, I'm gonna go down here to pretty low, like about 13 or so. Um, I'm gonna choose subject, which is gonna really be like there in the front end of the, uh, the train car, and I'm gonna say done. And all I'm gonna do is take this inner light, and I'm gonna go to, I gotta check my notes, uh, I'm going to about like 50 or something, 52, 53. All I'm really doing is focusing the viewer's attention on that. I'm not really using a vignette, although now that I come in here and look at it, I actually might do that a little bit, darken those edges a tiny bit. Um, but if you look at the vignette, especially around the train, it's gonna be a whole lot brighter in the end of that train car. So there's before and after. That vignette really gives me the opportunity to brighten that section of the photo because of the inner light and because I placed the center of it there. But it also lights up this pathway here in front of the train and it looks as though the light is coming in through the uh, those windows at the far end of the of the terminal, and it looks like it's kind of coming this way because I brightened that whole area. So if I turn that off, there it is before and after. It's got a little bit of a glare, but it looks like the setting sun is coming through. That's really my whole edit. That is full um, edit from base layer with a couple of minor adjustments, popping over to Roar HDR, doing some stuff, coming back, adding that Aurora HDR layer as a luminosity mask, and then inverting it, and then reducing opacity. So remember, you have all those kind of controls at your fingertips when you're using layers. And then this layer, I just went in, used a bunch of different tools to get the colors and the tones, the shadows, highlights, all that kind of stuff, the way I wanted them to look. A Couple of luminosity masks, a little bit of brush masking. And honestly, if this is too much for you, that I get it. it it's, I wouldn't call it over the top, but it's definitely kind of heavy handed. You could come in here and say, hey, I wanna take this down a little bit. And you could just reduce the impact, impact of all your edits by making an adjustment amount, or once again, using a uh, mask and perhaps putting a luminosity mask on the photo. I'm not gonna do that for this layer, and in fact, it goes to 100. I'm gonna leave it there, but that's my edit. Let me show you the before and after. That's how I started, single exposure, kinda boring. I wanted to give it some character, some life, and there it is afterwards. It's got some character and life. May or may not be to your liking, totally get it. Um, and I might play with the colors a little bit more. I'm detecting a little too much purple kind of over here, so I might have to go back and pull that back a little bit. But regardless, that is um, how I would edit this photo, mostly. I might, Like I said, I might make a few minor changes, but I really wanted to show how I integrate Aurora HDR into my workflow, show some tips and tricks around luminosity mass and brushing, uh, both at the, uh, the layer level and the uh, brush, or I should say tool layer, excuse me, 
tool level. And uh, basically, it just comes down to experimentation and taking control of the photo by using the tools that are at your fingertips and allows you to achieve your artistic vision for a shot. That's how I did this one, my friends. I hope it helps. I will be back with more Luminar 4 stuff soon, and I appreciate you watching. Have a great day. Take care, my friends, and adios.